What's up guys, this is Hitch Good, and we're bringing you some Battlefield 4 gameplay today in the background, but even though I am a hardcore gamer, I want to keep up with what is going on uh, in the times, what's important, because there are things that are more important than video games, and even though I love playing those, that's what you're going to see from this channel a little bit more. We will talk about uh, current events from time to time and things that are really important, um, especially, <clears throat> excuse me, especially when it involves the culture war of today. Um, today we're going to be addressing a recent controversy from the Black Rifle Coffee Company. Uh, as you may already know, but for those who don't, Black Rifle Coffee Company participated in an interview with the New York Times last week on the 14th. I don't know why they would agree to <laughs> an interview from the New York Times, a leftist organization that probably hates their guts, but they did it anyways. Their comments during this interview uh, have really caused reportedly thousands of loyal customers to cancel their coffee subscriptions and take to the internet demanding answers and clarifications, which has company CEO Evan Hafer um, seemingly backtracking on a few things, or at least clarifying, um, that were said in the interview. Of course, this isn't the first time that BRCC has come under scrutiny from their customer base, and this may be the one where customers start seeing a pattern and maybe begin distancing themselves from the company uh, and their business and their brand. Uh, previously, Evan Hafer was noticed liking posts on Twitter um, that alluded to Kyle Rittenhouse being a loser and a racist. Um, there was, uh, there was, and of course, they were forced to backpedal on some of these comments. And in the end, they just kind of, you know, offered a very middle of the road, "Hey, you know, we neither support nor uh, uh, denounce him" kind of thing. And then there was another instance where they found out, I think that Evan had donated to the Biden campaign, which turned out to be uh, a lost bet. You know what? Fair enough. It's a lost bet. Sure. That's fine. I understand. Cool. But when we look into your other giving records and we can find where you donated $500 to Obama, that brings up some questions, you know? And hey, sure, I've even got conservative friends that voted for Obama because they believed in the whole hope and change thing and now they understand what a mistake that was. Maybe you think the same thing, Evan. I, I don't know. Uh, but then you also donated a fair lump of sum, $500, to Tulsi Gabbard, who is a Democratic uh, candidate. Even though she was the most moderate in the field, it still kind of says something. And to be fair, uh, you can also find where Evan Hafer uh, donated uh, a lot to uh, David Perdue and put a decent amount of money into the uh, Georgia races uh, in the last Senate race in this last election. Uh, but you can also find where he was you know, donating to liberal outlets as well. And when we're looking this stuff up and we're looking at your branding and we look back at you, it just comes off as very disingenuous to your to your customer base and to those who, who look up to you. And every single time something like this happens where, you know, you come out and you start liking, you know, derogatory tweets about Kyle Rittenhouse, you got to go on the Dana Lash show and the whole PJ media, uh, Dana Lash and all, the whole right media conglomerate has to yeah. kind of coach you in. No, no, no. This is what you meant to say, right? This is what you're supposed to say. Like, you believe that uh, Kyle Rittenhouse had a right to defend himself, right? That's what you meant to say. And they're like, yeah, that's what we meant to say. And then they try to make it out like all is forgiven. It's just just oh, disingenuous. Dude, I'm, I'm but during yeah. the interview with the New York Times, uh, we're start, like I said, we're starting to see a little bit more of a pattern. Hafer was asked about one of the January 6th uh, Capitol protesters wearing a BRCC hat on the surveillance. So yeah. at this point, the New York Times, they show Hafer uh, pretty much going full apologist. They paint him in this light. Hafer said, how do you build a cool kind of irreverent pro-Second Amendment, pro-America brand in the MAGA era without doubling down on the MAGA movement? dot 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 the racism effing really pisses me off like i'll pay them to leave my customer base i would gladly chop out all of those people out of my effing customer base and then get and pay them to get the f out the article went on to say Got him. you can't and uh, this was uh best matt best he said you can't let sections of your customers hijack your brand and say this is who you are it's like no no we define that fair enough okay that's fine but the Rittenhouse episode may have cost the company thousands of customers, but Hafer believe it's also allowed Black Rifle to draw a line in the sand. Hey, he said, it's such a repugnant that. group of people, Hafer said. It's like the worst of American society. And I got to flush the toilet of some of those people that kind of hijack portions of the brand. Then again, what Hafer insisted was a quote-unquote super clear delineation was not too clear to everyone as Munchell's uh, choice of headgear vividly demonstrated. Of course, Munchell is the guy in the Capitol surveillance video wearing the oh, BRCC gear. <clears throat> but after this went out and oh, BRCC oh, yeah, oh, yeah. even there retweeted this, social media just obviously just lit up, as you've probably seen. After five days of drama, Evan Hafer went on Instagram to address the issue. 
Here he stated that the comments about racists didn't have anything to do with Trump or the MAGA movement, and you can listen to your, for yourself right here. Number one, uh, the first and probably the most important inaccuracy in any story published is that I've somehow made derogatory statements towards my customers uh, or conservatives. And I'll give you the context behind this. So the actual conversation was taking place around anti-Semitism and racism in America. And then our attack, because we were attacked last year by a group of very organized uh, anti-Semites, if you didn't know, and they were targeting me because of my last name and because of my heritage. Uh, we were purely discussing that. I said, anti-Semites and racists do not have a place in my company and I will gladly tell them to leave and pay them. Uh, so that's what I was referencing. The context of the conversation was only about that. And I was never referencing conservatives or putting those groups together with conservatives, which I think is very important. There's no chance in hell that I'm gonna talk shit about, about conservatives to the New York Times. Like, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> now this seems to clear up a lot, but there's still some questions out there that just don't 100% satisfy me. I wanna look at this as objectively as possible. I want, I really, seriously, I, I want to believe Black Rifle Co Coffee Company's words uh, I want to believe that they were taken out of context, and I do believe it's entirely possible that the left-leaning New, New York Times would love to publish an article uh, besmirching wow. a group of 2A supporters out, whose customer base is mostly made up of Republican <laughs> voters. Uh, I'd love to believe that, and a lot of times I would, you know, for them to say, hey, it's fake news. Yeah, I, I would normally, uh, you know, just 100% agree, but we've seen a pattern here. So, number one. BRCC should have realized this. Hafer should have realized this. They came back to say that they were giving the New York Times the chance to write an objective article. However, unlikely that could have been. BRCC did not have to wade into the waters on this, though. When asked about the protester wearing BRCC gear, Hafer could have easily just responded, hey, I can't help what people wear, and move the hell on. Instead, he has to go into this diatribe about navigating the waters of the culture war, uh, when BRCC has freely waded into those waters, has chosen yes. to wade into those waters. They weren't forced to go there. And it makes me kind of concerned that BRCC is extremely afraid of being canceled and wants to pander to both sides and in the end just trying to not take a side at all. If that's the case, just close down all this drama with no comment. You don't have to go in all that detail. Don't give them the quote to hang you with. And number two, BRCC retweeted the article immediately without any clarification or comment that the article was misleading or needed corrections. If the article paints you in a false light, why retweet it? I mean, did you even read the article before sending it out? Is this just a blunder? Is this incompetence? Is this something that you agreed with and how it was written? Because I just don't understand. I mean, if I found an article that mischaracterized me or misrepresented what I said, if I tweeted it out, it would be a condemnation. It would be a firm explanation that the authors were lying. But BRCC didn't do this at all and the response came only after the backlash. What also concerns me is this pattern we may be starting to see here. As stated before, there was a serious controversy over Hafer liking tweets that blamed Kyle Rittenhouse for defending himself and his community and called the Kenosha shooter a racist and a loser. And the, the, But then there was a picture um, that was posted of Kyle with his family wearing a BRCC shirt and they felt the need to come out and just totally separate themselves, saying they did not sponsor Kyle, they had no partnership with him, didn't have any affiliation with him. And you know what? I guess that's fine, you know, as a company. Okay, fair enough. You know, it's something that's extremely contentious, and, you know, you just want to put a little distance there. I can understand a company doing that, but it's still kind of odd considering their customer base, and especially with Hafer, you know, liking those other tweets, belittling Kyle, it's obvious Hafer does not support this kid's innocence and the base of his customers do. Um, <clears throat> but he, in the video, he went on to say that uh, he was attacked and maligned uh, with very a whole lot of anti-Semitic uh, responses, which I don't personally see a lot of day, a lot a lot of times if I do it's always coming from the left and their hate for Israel and their support of Palestine um, I I just haven't seen it I'm not saying it's not there I'm not Jewish so maybe I don't know maybe I'm speaking out of ignorance on this but I just haven't seen it I didn't even know that Hafer was Jewish you know um, so I didn't see any of that so I can't speak to the validity of it 
Um, and if, you know what, if I had come under that kind of scrutiny, maybe I would have said the things that Hafer had said talking about racists in that New York Times article. But once again, you're talking to the New York Times and they're going to move it around whichever way to make it look like you're attacking your own base, um, which may or may not you know, be the truth. Uh, <clears throat> but what's the final verdict here? I want to hear from y'all. Uh, as for me, I'm not going to trash the company. I'm not going to you know, talk, talk crap about them. But I do think there's some concerns. Hafer said that they don't want to conform to one side or the other, but when you promote your product by wading into the culture war, you are already putting yourself in a position to side with one faction or the other. You're putting yourself in that position to do just that. It's just the nature of the beast. And I personally think that BRCC doesn't just outright support the liberal agenda, but they're pretty much inept at, at navigating the waters of the mainstream media, of PR, the culture wars at large. And, and they, may, they may have some kick-ass videos uh, that we all enjoy. I'm not going to, uh, there's, you know, uh, I've got to admit, they're awesome. But when it comes to taking a cultural stand for something, it seems that they'd much rather not. And that's okay if you didn't promote the product in the way that they have. If you're going to put out songs about OF ISIS, we kind of expect you to have a backbone on other things as well, when comedy and views aren't up for grabs. I ultimately think that they, and mainly Hafer, are woefully incompetent in the PR scene, and they need to make up some real steadfast policies to keep this from happening again. If you're going to promote 2A, we expect you to defend 2A. If you're going to use conservative values to promote your brand, we expect you to defend those values, no matter if you get canceled or not. And we expect you to do it brashly because everything else that you've done has been brash. Everything they've got is explosions and tanks and talking about things that they would do to ISIS. And, and it's when you're that brash on these things, we expect you to be brash and hit back against the left because that's what you've built your product on and we expect you to do that no matter if it you know if if sales for coffee are up or not so it kind of makes you look like a grifter i'm not saying they are but it it puts that it, it puts it in that light which is definitely awful because i frankly i think hafer is absolutely terrified of getting canceled when in reality there probably wouldn't be anything better to happen to the company. If they stood against the left under a barrage of attacks, they would sell the hell out of some coffee. I'd go buy three or four bags just because they did it. But instead, they decide to waver and be weak-kneed, and they just find themselves losing money among their base while not gaining a single leftist customer. They're just laughing at you right now. But anyways, guys, leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this. Uh, you know, like if you agree, and, and hey, if you agree, Leave it in the comments as well. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more content like this. As I said, you know, I really love playing video games and everything, but there are times where we need to start talking about things like the culture war. Not that this is one thing that is in incredibly important, and, I'll, and if you like this kind of content, I'll keep putting this kind of content out. Um, I think it's, uh, it's very important for the gaming community to uh, be informed, to be well-learned, and know why they believe what they believe and that we don't just uh, listen to talking heads on TV. But anyways, guys, y'all have a blessed day. Don't forget to leave your opinions in the comment section below. Jesus loves you. Hit you good out.